And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka. You have the floor, Sri Lanka. Uh, distinguished delegates. Behalf of the G77 and China. We thank Ms. Catherine Pollard and the Secretary General for Management Strategy, Policy and Compliance for comprehensively briefing the committee on the 7th of May of the current fiscal situation of the organization. Mr. Chair, my delegation shares the concerns raised by other speakers regarding the deepening liquidity crisis which seriously impacts the regular budget. There have been cash deficits earlier in the year, and liquidity reserves, we are told, have been exhausted, which phenomenon does not augur well for financial system stability in the UN, and a far cry from what is envisaged as a sustainable budgetary practice. Needless to say, it is crucial that the Secretariat appropriates the available resources, contributions from the member states in a more effective, impartial, and transparent manner within the prescribed mandates. I repeat, within the prescribed mandates. Strict adherence to budgetary discipline is greatly required at all times, more particularly in the present environment when the global economy has been severely impacted due to the pandemic and when member states consequently are required to adopt austerity measures of a compelling nature to keep their country fires burning. As the Secretary General so aptly puts it, we are all in it together. We must remember that we are trustees of an onerous obligation bestowed on us by the peoples of the farthest corners of our planet to ensure that we get our priorities right in the appropriation of their contributions to this August Assembly. This fundamentally requires the appropriation of finances in a manner consonant and as envisaged by the rules of this Assembly. It must always be strictly intra vires. We must scrupulously give life to our power of regulatory oversight into ensuring that we do not abdicate that great trust to administrative functionaries in the maze of a sophisticated administrative structure who have the potential to undermine the very spirit of the charter of this great assembly. Mr. Chairman, our committees bestowed with that power of oversight cannot be reduced to mere rubber stamps. Consultation, consensus, respect for sovereignty of member states must be an overarching consideration before we embark on the appropriation of UN funds which must be for the common good for the peoples of the world and not to satisfy the peculiar agendas of member states, groupings of member states, and sometimes of our own agencies that hold briefs for other entities who have cleverly inveigled themselves into this system for the purposes of prosecuting their own agendas, which are not for the public good. The upshot of all this is the impact amongst others on the development pillar of our structure. It is deeply distressing and evokes serious concern as it has a direct impact on the implementation of such programs in developing countries and countries in special circumstances who are managing to keep their head above water in a world that is experiencing a pandemic to which none of us have an effective remedy. Although I do not agree with some of our critics, they say that we carry on political business as usual, as if though nothing has happened other than the cosmetic procedures and the rhetorical manifestations of the illusionary ideals that we consistently keep reminding ourselves. So consistent that some of us ask ourselves the question of whether we need to be reminded to remind ourselves so often, lest we forget them as we leave the premises of this hallowed institution. Mr. Chair, this perhaps is a time for introspection, a time to put in Put it, to put it in financial terms, for an audit, not really of the numbers, but of the proprietary of the, of the procedure that we have been hitherto following in the appropriation of our resources, which presents to us a dismal picture. 
at a time where the UN needs to focus more on uniting our strengths to maintain international peace and security and to employ international missionary for the promotion of the economic and social advancement of all peoples. The resources of the United Nations should be used only for actual requirements. We cannot leave room for the engagement in forays into extra jurisdictional activity. Sri Lanka is therefore concerned on the proposals to use these limited resources from the UN regular budget for the implementation of politically motivated agendas. It is, our, it is the utmost responsibility of this committee and that of the advisory committee on the administrative and budgetary questions to impartially consider such requests vis-a-vis -vis the actual requirements. Mr. Chair, Sri Lanka appreciates the member states who have paid their assess contributions to the regular budget in full for 2021. Whilst acknowledging the solution to the liquidity crisis is for all member states to pay their contributions in full, on time, without condition, it is also significant to recognize the challenging economic situations in, mem in the member states in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Against this backdrop, it is important that member states with the capacity to pay their outstanding, outstanding assessed contributions do so while recognizing the efforts made by many member states to pay their outstanding contributions as well as their genuine inability to perform financial obligations for reasons beyond their control. In conclusion, Sri Lanka calls on the Secretariat to submit itself to more stringent regulatory oversight as a tool in achieving greater efficiencies in the appropriation of financial resources, having in mind the objectives of the Charter of the United Nations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the distinguished representative, permanent representative of Sri Lanka for that statement.